Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I'm going to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Um, this video marks the beginning of a new series. This series is going to be um, on medical ethics. Um, as you guys know, what I do is upload the information to a document, PDF document, click the link in the description field, it'll take you to the PDF, print the PDF, and use it to supplement your readings. The readings for this text will be coming from two texts. One, um, Classic Works in Medical Ethics. So get this book. This is the book that I'll be using. Um, and also, I'll be using Tough Decisions, Cases in Meth Medical Ethics. This is a second edition. So I'll be using both of these texts for um, to supplement the medical ethics lecture. Uh, Classic Works in Medical Ethics and Tough Decisions, case, uh, Cases in Medical Ethics, second edition. So these are the two texts that I'll be using. Um, and I think that's really about it. The only, the only other sort of introductory comment is that the medical ethics that I'm going to um, lecture that I'm going to give is going to be a very holistic, a very broad scope lecture. Um, I'm not just specifically going to be looking at issues of uh, injustices within the medical community, but we're going to look at medical ethics. I'm, I'm also following the, the book, obviously. We're going to look at medical ethics in holistic terms, and we're going to begin in antiquity. So I'm not going to give a, a full ethics lecture, because that would be its own series, right? I still have yet to do a, a bona fide, complete ethics series. With respect to this series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to some of the concepts, just very generally, of the concepts, uh, ethical concepts, that will inform the way in which physicians and the medical community um, receives their obligation from society, right? And we'll talk about the relationship of the obligation between the medical establishment and community and society and such. So again, this first, this first part, section one of the analysis, is going to be very, very general. We're going to talk with respect to antiquity and uh, specifically the idea of a virtue-based ethic. So virtue-based ethic. Okay, so this is medical ethics. And this is uh, section one. Okay. Um, this is going to cover page uh, one through 18 from this text. So page one through 18 from this text. All right, virtue ethics. Here's a quote. Quote. The ethical theory that emphasizes acquiring good traits of character, right? So a virtue-based ethic is an ethical theory that emphasizes acquiring good traits of character. Right? So we're going to be looking at, when we're talking about virtue ethics, looking at good traits of, good traits of character. And obviously we know the polemic relationship, right? On one end, we have virtue, and at the other end, we have vice, right? So one end, we have virtue, the other end, we have vice. Virtue is good and moral, vice is bad and immoral, okay? Super simple. Okay, so when we're talking about virtue, we're actually talking about um, character-based traits. With respect to these character-based traits, then, we recognize immediately that virtue is going to condition the way in which a moral agent, we'll identify the individual actor, the actor, A-C-T-O-R, as moral Agent, right? So we're going to define the actor, the individual actor, in these ethical scenarios that the various ethical scenarios that I'll be um, elaborating on as the moral agent. With respect to the moral agent, we recognize that a virtue-based ethic is such that it conditions the way in which the moral agent acts. Right. So we're talking about behavioral characteristics, right? The characteristics of these uh, individual moral agents and their actions is going to and is said to conform to whatever norm the um, virtue-based ethic espouses. So that's the first one. Okay. Sort of simple. To, again, you know, I don't want to overcomplicate it, we're just getting started. 
Um, two, the ethical act was a performative act. Right? This is important. Right? Ethical act as performative. Right? The ethical act is performative. Um, to be ethical, one to be ethical meant one acted in accordance with one having a virtuous character. Right? In order to identify yourself as being virtuous, right? In order to identify yourself as actor, the moral agent, right? In order to identify yourself as being virtuous, it required that you acted. If I could write this morning, it required that you acted virtuously, right? The moral agent is said to act virtuously. And where does the action conform? To what does the action conform? Well, it has to conform to a standard. It has to conform to a standard of virtue, right? So, in a very general sense, we see that there is a contingency between what is the case, the act is the case, and I've done this before, but you know, this is a new series, so I have to just review this really quickly, and what ought to be the case, the standard says what ought to be the case, right, this becomes a description, and this becomes a prescription, and I'm going to play on uh, the word prescription, obviously, because to prescribe in the medical community means to, to give um, the way we think of it is to give pills, right? When you get a prescription for, for pills, you get a prescription for an x-ray. Uh, but what, uh, what prescription in its sort of truest sense means, in its most fundamental sense, is that there is a standard with which an individual ought to conduct themselves. This, take this pill and it will transform, we'll talk about this later, it will transform the way in which your body behaves, right? Now, um, it ought to be doing something different, right? So I'm going to prescribe uh, a change, right? This, the, the, the event of prescribing within the um, ethical community is very simple. I mean, there's no need to complicate it. It's, look, the current state of affairs, what is the case? The descriptive phenomenon of reality needs to change. It ought to be something else. So what do I do? I give you a prescription as an ethicist. I say, well, you know, you ought not to lie, right? Because lying is bad. Or you ought, you know, you ought to do good things. You ought to drink your milk. You ought to blah blah blah, right? I recognize that insofar as the moral agent acts in accordance with my standard of virtue, then I can transform the descriptive state into the prescription that I had, right? I can transform that. That should make sense, right? I, that might have maybe I went through that a little quick, but it, I mean I feel like that should make sense. Right, the idea is I need to transform what is the case into what ought to be the case so that the prescription now becomes descriptive, right? Okay. So hopefully I didn't, and I'll read your feedback to see if I, if I went through that too quick and I'll slow down if I, need, if I need to. Number three, role identification then. That is, what one did became the conceptual grounds for initially um, assessing ethics and ethic behavior, right? What one does then is a relationship. There's a relationship that we can identify between the acts that an individual does, right? This is um, obviously what one does, your acts or what you do, you know. What you do then, as I've said, role identification then, what one did, does, became the conceptual grounds for initially accessing ethics in an ethic of behavior. If I want to know whether or not an individual is living up to a standard, if I want to know whether or not an individual is acting in accordance with a rule, with a principle, what I need to do is I need to observe. Right? So we can see now that there is, and we're talking antiquity, right? So there is an attempt to There is an attempt to observe phenomena in the world. We, know, we recognize that science, I mean, this is what scientists do, right? They observe 
um, phenomena that exist in the material world. They make assessments 